This year marks the 125th anniversary of the assassination of Empress Elizabeth of Austria. Her death spread widespread grief and shock across Europe. Throughout the Austro-Hungarian Empire, as well as other countries in Europe, a period of mourning was arranged and memorial services were held. Her assassination prompted nations to increase their security measures and take additional precautions to protect their head of state against anarchists and political radicals. Many people began seeing the anarchists as a threat to social order and stability. The public outcry against anarchism rose. Empress Elizabeth, or Sissy, as she is commonly remembered today, left this world with a lasting legacy. As she did not pose for photographs after her mid-thirties, her youthful beauty is locked in people's minds up until this day. Her looks and fashion sense laid the foundation for many books, movies, and TV series. She somehow seemed like a tragic but yet so mystical figure who struggled with the royal life she was pushed into. Her tragic assassination in 1898 therefore only added up to the mystic surrounding her life. Her death to this day continues to capture the public's imagination and interest. If you have ever been to the imperial crypt in Vienna, you can see people still laying flowers and curtsying in front of her grave. Born Duchess Elizabeth Amalie Eugenie in Bavaria, the day before Christmas 1837, Sissy, as she was called, was a third child to her parents. Her father was Duke Maximilian Joseph in Bavaria, a member of a junior branch of the royal house of Wittelsbach. Her mother was Princess Ludovica of Bavaria, a daughter of King Maximilian I Joseph of Bavaria. As only minor royals within Bavaria, Sissy and her six surviving siblings grew up far from the strict royal protocols at court. She enjoyed a very unrestrained and unstructured childhood, going as far as skipping her school lessons to go riding instead. Sissy's undisturbed, quiet childhood ended abruptly in 1853 when she accompanied her sister Helen to get engaged to their cousin and emperor of Austria, Franz Joseph. The two sisters and their mother arrived dressed in black as they visited the Dowager Queen of Bavaria, who was in mourning for her brother. As their coach with their formal dresses never made its way to Bad Ischl, where the engagement was set to take place, the three women met the Austrian Emperor while dressed in black mourning clothes. It is said that black did not suit Helen's dark coloring, while it made Sissy's blonder looks more striking. When the 23-year-old emperor met Helen for the first time, they were not comfortable with each other. In the meantime, Sissy caught Franz Joseph's eyes. The young emperor turned to his mother, who was also the aunt of Sissy and Helen, and told her that if he could not marry Elizabeth, he would not marry at all. Five days later, the 15-year-old Sissy was engaged to the Austrian emperor. Their wedding followed eight months later on April 24, 1854, in Vienna. Sissy was 16 years old and the Empress Consort of Austria and Queen Consort of Hungary. She struggled to adapt to the stiff and formal Habsburg court after enjoying such a quiet and peaceful childhood. Only ten months after their wedding, she gave birth to her first child, a daughter, which was immediately taken away from her. A year later, her second child was born, and much to the disappointment of court, it was a girl again. At around the same time, Sissy began showing first signs of health problems, becoming ever more anxious. In addition, the fact that she still did not manage to give birth to a male heir made her unwanted at court. Overall, the Empress never became happy in her role and with the stiff court life. She faced hostility from the Austrian aristocracy who resented her Bavarian background and just did not live up to the expectations set on her. As a means of escape from her life and her misery, Sissy took up a life of endless travels. On her steamer Myanmar, she traveled through the Mediterranean to Corfu, Morocco, Algeria, Malta, Turkey and Egypt. The Empress also had a passion for riding sports which gave her some sort of freedom. After all, it seems that Sissy never regained her childhood happiness. She was obsessed with her figure which she tried to maintain as slim as possible and her beauty which she tried to keep youthful. She would have periods in her life in which she would fast for days. 
In addition, she developed an extremely rigorous and disciplined exercise plan. This behavior would only get exaggerated towards her last years. Sissy became more restless and obsessive, weighing herself up to three times a day. By 1894, she weighed her lowest at 95 pounds with a height of 5 foot 8. Next to the destinations already mentioned, Sissy also liked to travel to Geneva, Switzerland. Her visit in September 1898 would become her last. Despite warnings of possible assassination attempts, Sissy decided to travel incognito to Geneva, where she stayed at the Hotel Beau Rivage. However, an employee of the hotel revealed her real name. On September 10, 1898, at around 1.35 p.m., Sissy and her lady-in-waiting made their way to the shore of Lake Geneva. She insisted that only her lady-in-waiting join her on the walk instead of her whole entourage. While walking along the promenade, they encountered the Italian anarchist Luigi Lucchini. From then, everything went quick. Lucchini quickly stabbed the 60-year-old empress with a sharp file. The empress collapsed but quickly got to her feet. Still with her lady-in-waiting by her side, she walked roughly 100 yards to the steamer they planned to board. There, Sissy lost consciousness and collapsed again. The boat's captain, unaware of Sissy's identity, began sailing out of the harbor. Three men carried Elizabeth to the top deck, where they laid her on a bench. Elizabeth's lady-in-waiting cut open her dress and her corset laces so she could breathe. Sissy shortly regained consciousness, and when asked if she was in pain, she replied no. She then continued to ask what had happened before she lost consciousness again. Elizabeth's lady-in-waiting noticed a small brown stain above her breast and decided to inform the captain about her real identity. The boat quickly sailed back to Geneva. There, the empress was carried back to the hotel by six sailors. Back at the hotel, she was laid onto a bed, but it became clear that she was dead. Shortly after, two doctors and a priest arrived. Too late to grant her absolution, the doctors proclaimed her dead at 2.10 p.m. Elizabeth's lady-in-waiting closed her eyes and joined her hands before everyone knelt down to pray. Luigi Lucchini was born in Paris on April 22, 1873, and was left at the Foundling Hospital by his mother. His father is unknown. He was brought to Italy a year later where he lived between orphanages and foster families. Before the assassination of Empress Elizabeth, he worked odd jobs before moving to Switzerland. There, he became in contact with other anarchists. After stabbing the Empress, Lucchini fled the scene only to be found the next day. In custody, he told authorities that he traveled to Geneva with the intention of killing any sovereign as an example for other anarchists. His trial began a month later, and he was sentenced to life in prison. He was found dead in his cell in 1910. The news of Empress Elizabeth's death reached her husband, Franz Joseph, with a deep shock. He immediately set out to retrieve her body and make arrangements for her to return to Vienna. Three days after the assassination, officials arrived to identify the body. It was then placed in a triple coffin. The next day, it was transported back to Vienna on board of a funeral train. By that point, the entire empire was in deep mourning. Sissy's funeral took place on the 17th of September, 1898. Huge crowds gathered along the streets of Vienna to say farewell to their empress of 44 years. Monarchs from across Europe joined the procession. As they made their way to the imperial crypt, the streets were completely silent. Franz Joseph was devastated by his loss and his grief was apparent to all. As he had to say his final farewell, he broke down in tears. Her death would have a lasting impact on Franz Joseph, who reportedly wore a black bracelet for the rest of his life. He made sure to keep Sissy's rooms in Vienna exactly as she had left them. Her loss left a void in his life that was never truly filled. Franz Joseph went on to rule the Austro-Hungarian Empire until his own death in 1916. Today, the two rest next to each other in the imperial crypt in Vienna. 
Sissy's legacy lives on until this day. A fashion icon of the 19th century, perhaps the most beautiful woman of her time, and yet she had an almost lifelong struggle with herself. Her story is one of glamour and tragedy, making her a compelling historical figure.